Hi, my name is Russ Baker, and this is Avalon Holographics Flash Talk for the Blue Innovation Symposium. This is a bit of a teaser on what we're talking about here, holographic displays. Uh, these videos try to give you a sense of what the experience is like. Basically, you will see natural 3D objects on a screen from the correct perspective based on wherever you're sitting, and they will behave normally like real 3D objects. Now, we usually like to start by talking about what isn't a holographic or light field display. Um, you'll have seen various technologies out there, stereoscopic 3D, auto stereoscopic, VR and AR, uh, and, a more, and a new emerging type, which we call half parallax displays, uh, Sony and Looking Glass being good examples of those. None of these are properly holographic. In some cases, they're not even 3D, um, but the main point being they all use tricks. Um, some of them are better tricks. Half parallax stuff is a lot better trick. It's closer to what we do in light field displays. Uh, but they're not giving your eyes and your visual system a real image to focus on, and therefore they will always cause you physiological grief. The other thing we're not doing is what you've seen in movies and TV. Uh, the magic light source is the floating light. Uh, people have figured out how to do this by lighting the air on fire with lasers. However, that is, of course, kind of dangerous. We always joke Tony would be blind and burned and full of cancer and probably dead if he set that up in his lab. Uh, so this is done on film using video tricks. Uh, but nobody's figured out a way to realize it in real life. What we are doing is light field displays. These, uh, this picture from Prometheus is a pretty good example of what one of these might look like. Uh, the key is that we're not breaking the frame of the display. So all the light is coming from the surface of that table towards this camera. And uh, you can see depth both into the table and coming up above the table, but it is not breaking the frame of the edge of the table. Of course, in the actual movie, Ridley Scott loves that effect as do all directors and therefore he adds the floating light in um, which you couldn't see from this camera angle however if there were a screen off camera to the left then this character could actually see what's being shown in that uh, image there so when you're looking for a proper holographic display the key is it really needs to form real optical images that you can focus on it should behave a lot like an open window which means that you can have images coming towards you above the uh, above the display and into the tabletop or in a vertical case like a window and they should be providing you with natural spatial and depth cues so you don't have physiological issues so beyond the cool wow factor so what uh, the key is the light fields are actually what the uh, human beings evolved to see uh, anyone who was bad at this got eaten by tigers so we're very very efficient at it we can process a light field in a matter of milliseconds and immediately understand the space around us so that we can make decisions so if you only remember two things about these displays um, the first is that it can reduce cognitive load significantly from 20 to 50 percent and that they're very comfortable compared to other 3d technologies so you're not going to have to wear anything we're not going to be tracking your eyes and there's no side effects that you're going to see with all those other technologies you're not going to feel nauseous or uh, headaches or fatigue or any of those things so ask yourself uh, how often do you use 3D visualization and why aren't you using it more? Chances are it's because a lot of that technology has got problems. Uh, what do those current displays cause you in terms of problems and how could they be better? And if I had a better display, how would I use it? What's the ideal solution? Those are the questions we like to get to with uh, our potential customers. Uh, there are three markets we've identified as early adopters of this technology, defense, medical, and industrial. Uh, they have commonality in both the use cases, the benefits, and the things they're interested in. So on the use cases, you've got you know, some form of real-time mission-critical activities. The, uh, the defense battle space is a good uh, uh, example of this. Um, you could have any range of other functionality underneath that that is driving you to consider 3D displays, period. Um, the common benefits are, of course, cognitive performance, as I already mentioned, as well as just the ability to perceive in 3D, whether it's spatial information representing the real world or non-spatial data. All of the data in these markets are 3D. Um, nobody wants to wear headwear. Uh, everyone wants to be able to use it for long periods of time without any side effects. And often you're dealing with communication between experts and non-experts, uh, and it's just easier to show that using a natural display without anything to wear. So that is what we're building. Uh, we are doing natural 3D displays without accessories, without eye tracking, without side effects. And this will give you an ability to essentially have a window into a virtual world and see spatial data as we evolve to see it. Now, how can this help you? Well, mostly, uh, first and foremost, it's about de decision making. Faster, better decisions. Um, if you're in any kind of a real-time battle space, then obviously in the defense side, that's literally a battle space and it can help you win those battles. 
but surgeons are basically dealing with the battle space of the human body. And in general, if you're in an industry, you're often fighting time. So any time that you're looking to save time and money and possibly lives, this is generally a good fit. It lets you to collaborate naturally among multiple people, and you can stop fighting with those inferior 3D technologies. So that's it for us. Uh, if you have any more questions, please uh, feel free to reach out and ask. Thanks.